Welcome back. So if you like the channel, hit like. If you haven't hit subscribe, subscribe. If you hate the channel, hit hate. Today we're going to be talking about does your real estate agent suck or do you have unrealistic expectations? That's right. I see both. I see both. You know, I'll see really talented agents that are really trying to help buyers get them what they need. And I'll see buyers where they're just so unrealistic, it's never going to happen. They're not actually really mentally serious about buying a house. They just like looking at houses, right? Because that's the thing. If you've been going at it for a year and you still are getting nowhere and you've got one of two things, either you're not serious or the agent's terrible. So let's talk about signs the agent's not great. They're not showing you houses. That's number one. Um, they're not updating you. They're not sending you anything on the market, you know, and I know that sounds crazy, but I'll hear from people like, yeah, I talked to an agent a month ago. They said they'd start sending me stuff. I haven't gotten anything. <laughs> Did they tell you why they haven't sent anything? No, I haven't heard from them. Okay, that's not your agent, guys. You are not gonna work with that person. If someone says they're gonna do something and nothing happens, you are not working with them, number one. Number two, I'll hear from clients. They'll say, well, I saw a house I really wanted and I called them and they couldn't get me in. And they said it was impossible to get in and I called the listing agent and I got us in. Okay, that's a sign that your real estate agent is not working on your behalf. If you have to go and get a hold of the listing agent yourself to get in and it's easy and it takes you 10 minutes and the agent says it was impossible, that is a red flag. This does happen, guys. This does happen. Um, if the agent just says, you know, what you want is impossible, give up. Okay. They need to explain why it's impossible. And, and that's, that's an interesting thing because sometimes what one agent will view as impossible, another agent will see as totally plausible, okay? That's why a lot of times you'll hear my team go, if you're working with us, we'll be like, how's it going with your agent? Usually if we're asking that way, it's because we know of another agent in the market and we're seeing other clients get into houses in a similar price point and we're just seeing you not have any success. Right. And at that point, if I'm looking at two loans, let's say they're both 400 K and I know they're both looking for three bedrooms, two bathrooms. Okay. One has this agent they're in contract. This one's been looking for seven months with a different agent. Something's wrong, right? I know it's not the market because this just was accomplished. So what's wrong? Is it because the buyer over here has some unrealistic expectation of what the house should have? Is it because they really aren't ready to commit? Because sometimes you get pre-approved, you start shopping, but it's a big move to commit. So you don't. Okay. Or does that agent suck? Okay. Is that agent not full time? Right. There's a lot of part time, barely time agents in America. You know, the average, the average agents, the people who do the bulk of the business, it's like 10%. I think it's actually lower than that. I'll get that statistic or if you're a realtor, chime in. But there's a lot of agents that close one or two houses a year. So how involved and active in the market are they? How much could you know if you only close two houses a year? You're not going to know a lot. Like I hate to be blunt, but it's true. It's like a lender. If a lender closes two loans a year, are they an expert? No, but if you have an agent that's closing, you know, 10, 15, 20 houses a month, or let's say in parts of the country where there's less inventory a year, are they going to have more experience and have a better chance of getting you in than someone who does too? Yes, they are more involved in the market. Okay. And that's what we see a lot of is sometimes we'll see, oh, well, you know, I've got a client right now, really well qualified. I know that if they went with a different agent, they would be closed. They have been screwing around for six months with an agent that is, has no idea what they're doing. They're putting the, buy, the buyer in financial harm. We're actually at a point where we're saying you got to choose them or us. And the reason we're saying that is because we can't watch the train wreck anymore. You know, they're writing five offers at a time. They're getting in contract on four houses. They're screening out sellers across the county. Like it is bad stuff. In a situation like that, is it the buyer's fault? No, he's being guided by a terrible, 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 knows nothing agent, period. And look, she's really charming and sweet, but guess what? She's putting him in harm's way. He's never going to find a house. Okay. So it can be, it's not always the real estate agent's fault. It's not always your fault though either. And it's not always the market's fault. 
So it's important when you're in a situation where you're like, okay, I have a goal, I'm not reaching that goal, that you stop and you examine why. First, is the real estate agent responsive? Does it seem like they're proactively looking for you? Okay, if you say no to that, you gotta get a new agent. Do they seem knowledgeable about the area? That's important. Lenders, we do loans all over the country. Real estate agents, they need to know the area. It's that simple. They need to know the area because how are they gonna tell you which neighborhoods are best for 300K if they don't know the area, right? They're as blind as you are. Go to Zillow, you're gonna have the same result, okay? Um, how proactive and positive is your real estate agent? That's a big question. Mindset is so important in this business. I see it every day. I can have one client in an area. Let's just use Houston. Let's use Houston, for example. And I can talk to one real estate agent that says, you're never going to get closing costs. This is a waste of time. The whole market's so competitive. Whereas I can talk to another agent who says, oh, okay, at their price point, this is what we can probably do. You know, this is what we have to look for. This is how to accomplish it every day, you know? And look, there are some price points in certain areas. I'm gonna use Houston as an example again. You know, Houston, if the house has a pool and it's totally redone and you're in that million dollar price point, there's a lot of competition right there. It doesn't matter what agent you talk with, there's a lot of competition. But you need to be working with that agent that goes, hey, there's a lot of competition. Here's what I've done to help my clients win. Not someone that says, there's a lot of competition. Uh, can you just give them your, your blood? Give them your blood and your wallet. Do you have that baby? You have a couple. Can, let's give them that too. Let's give them that, right? You need an expert. Okay, now, what are some signs that you're the problem? It happens, okay? I have a client right now where they qualify for a lot more. Their debt to income is incredibly low and they're trying to stay at a specific payment. The payment is not realistic for the area that they're looking in. The payment ties to a $200,000 loan. The neighborhood that they're looking in is $400,000. It's never gonna work. You are not gonna be able to make that very low payment on a $400,000 house unless you suddenly come in with a truckload of money. Sometimes you have to sit down with yourself and go, yeah, I know that I only wanna pay X, Y, Z, right? But is this realistic for this price point and neighborhood? And you can easily call me and be like, you know, I, I want to buy a $500,000 house. I want to put this much down. I want my payment to be this. Is this realistic? And I'll say, yeah, or no. It's that simple, right? But there's a lot of people where they're like, this is my budget. I have to stay to my budget. But they're looking at an area that's never going to fit their budget. So if you have that budget and you want to stick to that budget, you need to look at an area where the houses actually cost that much. That simple, you know? And then I also have it where people will be looking at scam foreclosure sites. There's a lot of scam foreclosure sites. There's a lot of bullshit TikTok videos right now that are like, I built, it's always a guy, always. I've built all my wealth. What I do is if someone doesn't pay their property taxes, I buy the house out from underneath them. I get it for a steal. Okay, what they're not telling you guys is they're doing this with cash or they're getting a hard money loan, right? And they're having to evict the homeowners that just had their house stolen from them because of property taxes. How well do you guys think that goes over, right? Right? They also, they don't know if they have clear title, okay? If you're doing a loan, guys, we need clear title. We need an appraisal. There's stuff that we need. But these TikTok videos make it sound like everyone can do it. Go do it, it's so easy. It's not right? But here's the thing. They wouldn't get views and they wouldn't be able to sell their courses because that's what they're selling. They're always selling a course if they told you the truth. So whenever you guys are online and you're like, okay, this is my budget. This guy's on TikToks telling me how. If he's selling a course, I want you to just disregard their information immediately because they're making everything sell, sound super easy so they can sell you a course. Okay. Realisticness. So if you're looking in a neighborhood where everything's 1970 and you want a brand new house, that's not realistic. It's not realistic. Go look in a brand new neighborhood or look for a neighborhood where everything's been redone. You know, check your own expectations. Is what I'm asking from the real estate agent attainable? Sometimes it's not. And it doesn't matter how good the agent is if your expectations are unrealistic. You know, we have another client right now who qualifies for as much as they want, but they don't want to spend more than 400,000. 
but they only like houses that are 600,000 plus, but they won't spend over 400,000, but they only like houses that are 600,000 plus. I said it twice so you guys could see how this is never gonna work, right? So they're constantly having the agent go out and look at these 500, 600, $700,000 houses. They go, oh, I love this. The agent goes, okay, well, let's have Jen update your pre-approval. And they go, I don't wanna spend over four then. If you don't wanna spend over 400,000, why the hell are you going and looking at six, seven, and $800,000 houses? That's never gonna work. You're wasting your time, you're wasting the real estate agent's time, you're wasting the seller's time. If you want to spend 400,000, spend 400,000. Stop looking at houses that are six, seven, and eight, right? Okay, I'm saying right a lot because I want you guys to agree with me in your living rooms. So whenever I say right, you can make it a drinking game too. Whenever I say right, be like, yes, or whatever's best for you. Water, drink water, alcohol's bad for you. So here's the deal. Sometimes you have a real estate agent that doesn't know what they're doing. You know, they're leading you down bad paths or they're just lazy or it's not their full-time job. So they're not giving you the attention you need to find a house. Other times you just have super unrealistic expectations. Both of these can be fixed. Both of these can be fixed and get you into a home. It's about being aware and honest with yourself. Okay, I've had to do that every time I have bought a house. It doesn't matter how much I qualify for, I always wish it was more, right? And look, my qualification is based on what I'm comfortable with as a payment. So I am a little bit of that nightmare client that's like, I only wanna pay this, but ooh, that's beautiful. But I'm self-aware enough to go, that is beautiful, but we're not gonna go see it because I don't wanna pay for it. Why would I wanna play head games with myself like that? Like. Of course, if I go see something more expensive, it's gonna be dreamier, like that's the way this works. So if you wanna to stay to a specific price, a specific budget, only look at houses that meet those guidelines. If you want to you know, buy a house in a neighborhood that's an incredibly expensive neighborhood, we gotta get you qualified for that or we need to look at another neighborhood. It's that simple. So I hope this video has been helpful. It was a little bit brutally honest, but at the same point, I think that if you wanna get home, if you truly wanna get home, you wanna buy a house, you wanna put your feet down in your house, you have to be realistic expectations. You also have to be mindful that the person who's shepherding you, your real estate agent, may not be the best. They might be, but they may not be. And the more self-aware you are, the more you look at these situations, the quicker you'll get home. Thanks for watching.